Despite all progress and development, poverty remains a devastating and international problem. SDG 1 refers to the commitment to end poverty in all its forms by 2030. It is based on the principle that all people everywhere should enjoy the, a basic standard of living. Poverty is a multifaceted notion which is not easy to define and to evaluate. In 1995, the United Nations has defined poverty as a condition characterized by severe deprivation of basic human needs, including material, food, uh, safe drinking water, sanitation facilities, sh shelter, and non-material aspects, education and information, for example. There are three different perspectives on poverty. The income perspectives. It indicates that a person is poor if his or her income is below the poverty line. According to the World Bank, extreme poverty refers to earning less than $1.90 per day. The basic needs perspective. It goes beyond the income perspective to include the basic material necessities of life, such as clean water, nutrition, sanitation, health care, shelter, clothing, to prevent uh, individuals from falling into poverty. This perspective raises questions such as, how much do we need? Do we all have the same needs? And finally, the capability or empowerment per perspective. Unlike the basic needs approach, which is a consumption-oriented approach, the capabilities approach is people-focused. It concentrates on enhancing people's well-being by expanding their capabilities so that they can look after themselves. It is about empowering people to get out of poverty and thereby meet their basic needs. There are many consequences to poverty, such as social exclusion, poor mental and physical health, it includes disease, low self-esteem, higher mortality. Just to give an example, 18,000 children still die each day from poverty-related causes. But also involvement in low-paid work, often terrible working conditions involving child and forced labor and exclusion and or exclusion from the job market. So let me give you some figures related to poverty. So in 2013, according to the World Bank, it's 767 million people that were estimated to be living below the international poverty line of $1.90 per person per day. It represents more than 10% of the population, so one out of 10 people in the world. Almost half of the world, over 3 billion people, live on less than $2.50 a day. There is a continuous gap between the rich and the poor. The poorest 30% of the world's population account for 5% of, of global income, while the richest 20% account for 75% of the world income. Almost half of the extreme, extreme poor live in sub-Saharan Africa, and almost, almost 30 fifths or, uh, three fifths, sorry, three fifths of the world's extreme poor are concentrated in just five countries. Bangladesh, China, the Democratic Republic of Congo, India, and Nigeria. The aim of SDG 1 is to end poverty in all its manifestation. For this purpose, it has defined five targets. Eradicate extreme poverty to all people everywhere, for all people everywhere. Reduce at least by half the proportion of people by all ages living in poverty. Implement nationally appropriate social protection systems and measures. Ensure equal rights to economic resources, basic services, ownership and technology. And finally, build resilience to climate-related extreme events. Unfortunately, the poorest are the most vulnerable to and concerned by climate-related extreme events. So what can business do? One of the key roles of business is to ensure that they meet their responsibility to respect human rights. But overall and beyond income, business can influence other dimensions of poverty, such as limited opportunities and capabilities. Here are some non-exhaustive examples of what they can do. They can develop products and services tailored for poor customers, for example, the mobile-based money transfer services for unbanked consumers. 
They can improve access to basic goods and services for people living in poverty. For example, access to medicines, access to water, access to electricity. They can recruit, train and employ local and community members, including those living in poverty. And they can invest in business-driven driven poverty eradica eradication activities such as develop living wage policies. To talk more concretely about SDG 1 on ending poverty, I'm very pleased to have with us Victoria Mandefield, who is the founder of a social enterprise in France called Soligui. Victoria, welcome. So you are a student at Audencia Business School and you will be graduating very soon. So your project is born from your personal experience and involvement in various associations helping people living on the streets. So you very quickly realized that um, it's one of the key issues is having access to the right information. Although many services exist, the people who need those services do not know about them. So from there is born your project. Could you tell us more about your project, what it is about? Yeah, of course. So uh, when I was volunteering, uh, whether it was in France or even in the US, what I saw was that people that are homeless or refugees simply don't know where to go. Uh, to access the basic needs like uh, alimentation or hygiene, or even to reintegrate the society. So what I did very simply is uh, a web platform, Soliguide, uh, that uh, allows people to access all this information. And because not everyone has a smartphone, we also uh, implemented some interactive kiosks on the street. So we have uh, two interactive kiosks in Bordeaux. Uh, which uh, very simply uh, are interactive um, screens that allows people to see on a map where they can go to access the basic needs and services they can access. Okay, so what type of, 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 uh, of services are you talking about? What is it all about exactly? Uh, so it can be a shelter, it can be a food distribution, but also where they can find jobs, where they can learn French, uh, where they can learn about digital skills too and when they can get access to clothes, there is a wide array of uh, services they can access. Okay, and you, uh, your enterprise is based in France, in Paris, is that right? And you are, uh, and it's uh, now working in Paris and in other cities in France? Yeah, so today we have uh, reference more than 3,000 uh, 3, uh, services in all of France, so that means uh, Paris, Bordeaux, Nantes, and the 9-3 uh, department. And uh, with all of this, in just one year, we have hallowed for more than 10,000 uh, orientations. Uh, so that means 10,000 uh, people that have uh, found the information that they needed. Okay. So and how is your project actually contributing to ending poverty, which is all about SDG 1? Uh, so what we found was that uh, when people uh, live on the streets, uh, there is um, a very short amount of time where we can uh, easily reintegrate them. If at that point, just when they arrive on the streets, they know just where to go to find help, to find food, to find shelter, that's where we can easily uh, help fight poverty in the long term because they will not stay on the streets. And if someone is on the street for like four or five years, it is very hard because they will have uh, a lot of psychological damage made from uh, living in the streets. So what we want is just to give them this little push just at the start, to know where to go. And there are a lot of people that are willing to help them. Mm -hmm. So what have been the, the main difficulty in starting your project? It's, so you, when did you start it? When did it start it? It started like two years ago two now. Two years ago. So what were the main challenges in starting your project? Uh, like any project, I think uh, it was time, because it's very time consuming. Uh, also when you're passionate, mm -hmm. so I had my studies. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I found it quite complementary uh, with Odensia and learning about business plan and everything to ask myself the right questions. Uh, the other challenge I found was just uh, being a young woman entrepreneur, mm -hmm. because uh, especially in the social uh, field, they, uh, it's very hard to gain credibility when you're just a 23 years old girl. <laughs> Yeah, which links very nicely with SDG 5, which is about gender inequality, and we see that in entrepreneurship is a very male-dominated yeah. area. Uh, but you, so your project, one of the key elements is smartphone, right? But is there not here a kind of contrast or paradox of having homeless people and refugees, I mean, for them to have access to those services, they need a smartphone. So how does it work? Is it possible? So a lot of people think that uh, homeless people simply don't have smartphones. 
and uh, that's right for also not part of them, but not for all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know a lot of homeless people that uh, even have tablets mm -hmm. and they play Candy Crush all day uh, because you get bored on the streets. And um, yeah, uh, we are actually conducting uh, a research on the subject. So it's a survey on uh, the national scale uh, that is meaning to um, fight against prejudices that people on the street don't have smartphones uh, and have actual, uh, actual numbers. Because uh, when I was talking with homeless people, some of them, uh, I found out that they had smartphones and asked them, why uh, don't you uh, like play with it? And they said, you know, having a, being on the streets is uh, and um, asking people for money, uh, it's very hard because uh, you get bored and you can't go on Facebook. Because if you go and if you take your smartphone, people will just pat at you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And how does it, uh, also one of the issues when you live in the street is how do you recharge your phone, for example? How do you get all the new applications? So how do you, how does it work and how is your also project is helping with that? Yeah, so uh, we also um, centralize every information on where they can charge the mobile phone mm -hmm. and where they can find uh, access to, uh, to internet. And uh, right, yes, there are a lot of shelters that have um, problem with finding enough uh, power socks to, for everyone yeah. because it's such a high demand. So what we did is one of our interactive kiosks in Bordeaux has a little um, space where you can put your phone and charge them just above the interactive screens because uh, it's such a high demand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is interesting here is technology is key and can help at least providing solutions to get out of poverty. Yeah. You earlier said that it's about you reach about 10,000 people. In a way, if I'm not mistaken, it's more than 3.8 million people uh, with homeless or refugees in France, more than 30,000 only in Paris. So one of the key issues is how to scale up your project that yeah. everybody can get access to those uh, important services. Yeah, so our main challenge in this is to find a business model, mm -hmm. which is really hard in social entrepreneurship, uh, more than in normal entrepreneurship, uh, to find a business model that will allow us to develop and grow and help people in all of France and even maybe one day in Europe or international. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have uh, ambition to go beyond France, to go worldwide, maybe with, with your project? Yeah, because uh, when I was doing volunteering in the US, mm -hmm. I was surprised the, uh, the key uh, factors were exactly the same in France and we had no information whatsoever, so it was just the same problems. Okay, interesting. What advice would you give to anyone else who would like to embark into your project to uh, provide solutions to end poverty? Um, I would say just to dare, mm -hmm. uh, because it's really hard and sometimes you think, oh my god, I'm never gonna mm -hmm. make it. And uh, maybe your first solution is not the right one, maybe it's the second or the third. Uh, like one of my colleagues is someone that tried another project and it didn't work, and, but then he eventually did something with all this experience. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just try it. Yeah. And whatever comes out of it, of it, it will be positive in the long term. Okay, so daring, not being afraid of failing, and yeah. being able to learn from our failures to continue yeah. our endeavors. And, and always be close to uh, the people you try yeah. to help. Very important, yeah. Thank you very much, Victoria. Thank you for sharing your experience and your initiative and for motivating, motivating us to do more about this problem. Thank you very much. Thank you.